Hi there, my name is Cyrus and I am from PAN, the Physicians Association for Nutrition. Welcome to the second edition of our study telegram. This is where we bring you close to the latest, the most interesting and the most groundbreaking scientific publications in evidence-based clinical nutrition. Now this is actually the first part of a three-part video series where we take a deep dive into a landmark study in the field of weight loss, which is a highly relevant topic both medically as well as economically. The study is called the Broad Study and it's a randomized control trial using a whole food plant-based diet in the community for obesity, ischemic heart disease or diabetes. The paper was published in March 2017 by a group of New Zealand researchers in the journal Nutrition and Diabetes, which belongs to the Nature Publishing Group. The abstract tells us that there is little randomized evidence using a whole food plant-based diet as an intervention for elevated body mass index or dyslipidemia. To close this scientific gap, the researchers set up a 12-week whole food plant-based dietary intervention with follow-ups at 6 and 12 months and they concluded that the intervention achieved greater weight loss than any other trial that does not limit energy intake or mandate regular exercise. Now these findings sound really interesting so let's take a closer look at the study and we'll start with some background information. Globally the obesity epidemic worsens. In 2014 more than 600 million adults were obese and a further 1.9 billion adults were overweight. They cite the WHO here and when we retrieve the updated numbers, we see that this trend has been continuing and that worldwide 39% of adults are now overweight and 13% are obese. Looking at the world's younger population, we see that over 340 million children and adolescents aged 5 to 19 and 38 million children under the age of 5 are currently overweight or obese. To put this into context, there are now almost as many overweight children as there are children who suffer from wasting, which refers to low weight for height and is a strong predictor of mortality for children under the age of 5. And as for adults, Overweight in this very young age group is on the rise. As the WHO points out though, obesity is preventable. And as we will see, the broad study suggests a highly effective approach, both for the prevention as well as the reversal of the current obesity epidemic because it provides a unique program focused on creating long-term behavioral change through developing practical skills, especially cooking healthy food. Why is it important to implement programs like this? A raised BMI, the authors say, is associated with many forms of cancers, type 2 diabetes, osteoarthritis, obstructive sleep apnea, a shorter life expectancy, a lower quality of life, and cardiovascular disease. Additionally, these diseases impose a significant financial burden on both the healthcare system and the wider economy. Remember this point because we will get back to that later. Interestingly, the authors continue, even though commercial weight loss programs are part of a multi-billion dollar market, reviews of dietary interventions for weight loss fail to demonstrate superiority of one diet over another. Low carb, low fat and also very high carb diets have all been shown to be effective weight loss tools. What's special? though about interventions using a whole food plant-based diet high in micronutrients and relatively low in fat is that next to the weight loss they have demonstrated reversal of ischemic heart disease, improvements in glycemic control, long-term acceptability and sustainability and reduction in prostate specific antigen in biopsy proven low-grade prostate cancer. The authors further point out some non-clinical implications which, in their opinion, deserve attention. A whole food plant-based diet, they say, generally requires less land, energy and water than a diet high in animal products. 
on a per calorie basis, a high meat diet, which you find as more than 100 grams per day, produces 2.5 times more greenhouse gas emissions than a strictly plant-based diet. Farming, the estimated 70 billion land animals consumed annually, contributes between 14.5 and 51% of total human-induced greenhouse gas emissions, more than all of transportation. After having looked closely at the scientific background, we now have a really good understanding of the general importance of the publication's underlying topic. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this trial, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss part two, where we will look in great detail at the author's novel approach and the remarkable outcomes that the participants experienced.